Okay, so that was number one. You did have to change your grams to moles and your milliliters to liters before you can put it into the equation and divide. However, on number two here, what are we seeing? What is the molarity of a solution that has 0 0.075 moles of calcium chloride dissolved in 2.5 liters of water? Do we have to convert anything? Do we have moles? Yes, do we have liters? Then all we have to do is do what? Divide, insert them and divide. So this one's a more easy one. Molarity is moles over liters, so that's going to be 0.75 moles over 2.5 liters. So what do we get there? And they're both have, they both have two significant figures here. So we're going to keep two significant figures. This ends up being 0.3. So how do we make that guy have two significant figures? Add a zero onto the end. And once again, this is a big M for moles, uh, molar, or you could write it at 0 0.30 moles divided by liter. Like the density units, grams per milliliter, or grams per liter, or something like that, this is a derived unit, moles per liter. Okay? So let's go ahead and look at the back. And this is kind of applying density to the current stuff that we're doing. So I wanted to show this to you, and this is one that's famous for being on the SOL. So I wanted to make sure everybody can see this one. What is the equation for density from the beginning of the year? Yes. We're just going to go with density equals mass over volume. Okay? Density equals mass over volume from the beginning of the year. Okay? Now, what is the molar mass of propane? Where do we go to find that? What do we use to calculate our molar mass? Come on, guys. Molar mass. We've done this multiple times. Correct. Carbon is 12.01. And how many of them are there? Three. Three. So we multiply that by three. So we get 36.03. Now, hydrogen is 1.01. And there are eight of them. So that's going to be 8.08. .08. Add those together, we get 44.11. This is grams per mole. That's the molar mass of propane up there, okay? Now, the molar mass of propane equals blank moles of propane. The molar mass of anything equals how many moles? Always one mole, good. So this should be one mole of propane, which for any substance that's molar mass will equal one mole of that substance. Now, how many liters of propane are there in one mole at STP? Liters. 22.4 of any gas will equal one mole at standard temperature pressure. What's standard temperature pressure again? What's standard temperature? Zero degrees Celsius, the freezing point of water. What is standard pressure again? Standard pressure equals 1 atm. Good. That is the atmospheric pressure at sea level. Very good. Okay. Well, you're going to have to know that part, this part for the test. You don't have to know it like for the quiz or anything, but you will need to remember what standard temperature pressure means. Okay. Now, if I know the mass, because I calculated it up here, my molar mass, I know that, right? If I know my liters, they both equal one mole, right? Can't I use those to find my density? Don't I have a mass over a volume now? 44.11 grams divided by 22.4 liters. Can't I calculate the density at one of one mole at standard temperature pressure? Like I said, this one shows up on the SOL, so hint, hint, you'll see it on your test, and it's also on your study guide. So I wanted to make sure we reviewed this. So here we would get 
So if we're using the values that they gave us, we would go to three digits, 1.97, I believe, grams per liter. The derived unit, grams per liter. Okay? So far, so good? So plan on one of them, that you'll see one of them. We're talking about empirical molecular formulas. Empirical formulas are the most reduced formulas you can get. Molecular formulas, though, remember, for molecules, molecules are covalent compounds. Covalent compounds, remember, are two nonmetals or more than one nonmetal together. Empirical formulas can be the most reduced form, so they can be like formula units of ionic compounds, but uh, we're really looking at them as the reduced form of molecular formulas. Some of them are real in existence, some of them are not, okay, but we use those smaller ratios to be able to figure out the formulas of molecules, because you can take a sample, stick it in a machine, and it will tell you the percents of each element that are in there. And therefore, from the percents, you can use percent composition to figure out the ratio of each atom in the compound. And this is how you're going to do it in just a minute. So just so we know what we're talking about here, molecular formula represents the actual number of atoms in each compound in the element. Okay? Actual. Okay? Glucose has C6H12O6. That's an actual formula. Okay, but the empirical formula is going to be the simplest ratio. So in ionic compounds, we call them formula units. So when we talk about them in terms of ionic compounds, they're called formula units. But that is sort of the same thing as an empirical formula. So in order to find the empirical formula, you must reduce the molecular formula as much as possible. So you look for a common factor between them. So like here in glucose, what's the common factor in all of the subscripts? Yes, it would be a 6. So 6, this one is divisible by 6. 12 is divisible by 6, and so is the other 6. So you would divide them all by 6. And if you divided them all by 6, you would reduce it down to CH2O. That would be the empirical formula of glucose. Okay. So as you can see, some other examples here. If we have this one, the C4H8 number, what can we divide both of those subscripts by? We can divide them both by what? A 4, right? If we divide them both by 4, we get C, because that's understood 1, H2. How about P4O10? What can we divide these both by? We can divide, divide them both by 2 to get P2O5. And this is the other thing they can throw at you. What if we have like N2O3? Does that have a common factor we can divide by? No. So its molecular formula here is the same as its empirical formula as well. So sometimes they match. Sometimes they can be the same. Same thing for this guy. CH2O. That is also the empirical formula for that one as well. And that one's actually formaldehyde. You've heard of formaldehyde because formaldehyde is what we use to preserve things. Okay? So, these are the um, ways to reduce them. Somehow lost my mouse here. There it is. Okay. So let's scroll down, look at calculating. Okay. In this particular case, we're going to be looking for an empirical formula or formula unit. Since this one has magnesium in it, I know it's automatically going to be ionic, so we could call it a formula unit as well. So we're going to follow four simple rules. First one is percent to mass. Then mass to moles. We're going to divide by the small, which means the smallest mole value. And then we're going to 
multiply until whole. So it's kind of a little rhyme. It goes percent to mass, mass to moles, divide by small, multiply till whole. So we're going to do each step so we can get used to these. They are long problems with many steps, not <coughs> difficult problems. You just have to be careful with your steps. So over here in the box, they already provided us the molar mass of each of the elements. These are the molar masses off the periodic table. But up here, we have our percentages in our problem. We have 72.2. So I'm going to stick that here in my percentage box. Okay? And my other percentage over here, which is going to be my 27.8. And I'm going to use the darker color because that one's kind of hard to see. So 72.2 and 27.8. So those are my percentages. So I'm going to immediately change them to grams. Okay? So I'm going to make the 72.2 grams and 27.8 grams. So change them, just take the percentage sign off and stick a gram to it. That's our first step, percent to mass. That's all I did, percent to mass. Changed it to grams. The next thing we got to do is change, go mass to moles. So how do we change mass into moles? Well, we always divide by our molar mass, right? It's not doing what I want it to do, so I'm going to rewrite it. So we're going to do a quick little t-chart here. We're going to diagonal down our grams and go to one mole. Another t-chart, we're going to diagonal down our grams and go to one mole. And over here, it conveniently lets you know what the molar masses were. The molar mass of magnesium was 24.31, and the molar mass of nitrogen was 14.01. So we didn't have to look those up because they provided it to us. Although you will go to your periodic table and look them up. Okay. Now, we calculate. So we do our 72.2 divided by our 24.31 in order to get our moles of magnesium. And since this has three digits here, I'm going to go to three digits here. And then I do 27.8 and I divide it by its molar mass, which is 14.01. And that's going to be 1.98. So, so far we've done percent to mass, which was going from here to here. Now we're doing mass to moles. Mass to moles. Third step says divide by small. So out of these two numbers here, the 2.97 and the 1.98, which one's the smaller one? This bottom one. So guess what I'm going to do with that? I'm going to divide each one by that number. So the, the 1.98 divided by 1.98 is going to give me 1. That's pretty easy. How about the other one, though? What does it give me? It gives me a 1.5, right? Is that a whole number? No, this is not a whole number. If both of them had come out of whole numbers, we could stop, and we should just use them. But since it's not a whole number, we need to multiply till whole. So this is the divide by small, okay? Now we're going to multiply until whole. So we multiply it by its lowest factor in order to make it a whole number. So anything 0.5 can be multiplied by 2 to make it a whole number. So this ends up being a 3. This ends up being a 2. And what you do to one element, you have to do to the other element in the formula. So if I multiply the magnesium number by 2, I have to multiply the nitrogen number by 2 as well. So that these numbers tell me the subscripts in my formula, the subscript. So this is going to be down here, MG3N2. That's my formula. All that work just to get two little subscripts, right? 
So, let's take a look at the next problem where they already do a couple of the steps for us. And we have one av um, added extra little part to do. Look what they did for us already. They still gave us our molar masses over here. That's nice of them to have given us our molar masses. So we didn't have to look those up on the table. Now, they changed the, take the percents and change them to grams. Percents to grams. Percents to grams. They did that for us. Then they even did our little T-charts for us, right? Doing grams to moles. Grams to moles. Grams to moles. Now all we have to do is calculate the moles because all those other steps were already done for us. So if the percentage of carbon was 68.54, we divide that by 12.01 and we can get the moles. Once again, I'm going to keep it four digits like my percent because my percent is four digits. I'm going to make this four digits. My hydrogen percent is only three digits, so I'm going to divide by 1.01 .01 and keep this one at three digits. And my oxygen's also at four like the carbon, so we're going to keep its moles at four digits. All right, so they did the percent to mass for us. Now we've just calculated our moles. Out of those three numbers, who's the smallest? Which one's the smaller one? This one on the bottom, good. So we divide everybody by that number. So this one comes out to being one. We'll figure out that in a minute. And that one as well. So let's go ahead and figure out the upper two. So we get 5.707 divided by 1.427. This one comes out to be 3.99. So we're going to round it up to 4. This one comes out to be 5.98-ish. So we're going to round that up to 6 because it's really close to 6. Okay. And we already know this one's 1. So can we write out our empirical formula now? Those numbers are the substrates. So this empirical formula is going to be C4H6O. Okay? Now that's the empirical formula for this guy. It did tell us up here the percentages. And although you can't see that one very well, but it also gives us this other little piece of information. The mass, molar mass, of the molecular compound is 140. So obviously our molecular compound is going to be bigger than our empirical formula here. So in order to figure out our molecular formula, we have to do an additional step. And the first step is to take our empirical formula and find its mass. So find the molar mass of the empirical. So I have C, which is 4 times 12.01. I have H, which is 6 times 1.01. .01. And I have O, which is 1 times 16. Okay? So if I add all this up, what do I get? Somebody add it all up. I'm supposed to be writing this down. Seventy point one, good. Or one oh, good. Grams per mole. Okay, good. Now that we know that value, we can do our quick little division. You basically take the molar mass of the molecular, which happens to be 140. You divide it by the molar mass of the empirical, which is 70.10. Oh. And what do we get? 140 divided by 70 is pretty much 
Two. Two. A multiplying factor of two. So that's what that means. It's a multiplying factor of two. So all I have to do now is take my empirical formula and multiply the subscripts by that multiplying factor. So if I do C4, H6O, and I multiply them all by 2, 2 times this 4 gives me how much? C what? C8. 2 times the 6 here gives me H what? H12, and then 2 times the understood 1 on the O gives me O2. So it added an extra couple of little things here to the problem. Okay? So what I would like you to do for the next 10, 15 minutes is work on this section right here. Finishing up this part. Those are just like the ones we did at the beginning of the notes. And I want you to try practice problem one. Practice problem one is just like the first one we did where you're only finding the empirical. Okay, you're only finding the empirical. So start there. Work on that. If you get ahead, you can keep going on some of the other problems on the back because those will be the rest of your homework. Okay, so now that you've had time to work on it, let's take a look here. Find the empirical formulas for each of the following compounds. How about number one? What's that one going to be? Both same, good, because we have an 11 in there, and 11 doesn't make anything very divisible, does it? So, this one's just going to be the same. How about number four? Let's just go down. They all can be divided by threes, right? So, this would be C, H, 2, O. How about number two? Divide by 3, so that gives us S, F, 2. How about 3? Divide by? Divide by 2, so this is going to end up being NO2. Good. And 5. Another same. It's easy, not divisible. Good. And here we go, last but not least. L I O two L I C O two very good divisible by two on that one. Now starting here, let's do our um, chart. We have N H C O. So I'm going to immediately change all of my percent that I'm underlining here straight to grams, percent to mass, that's what you do, percent to mass. So this is 46.67 grams. This one would be 6.70 grams, 19.98 grams, and 26.65 grams. Then we can go to our T charts and change them. Grams to mole, and nitrogen is 14.01. We can do grams to mole, 1.01 grams equals 1 mole. Grams to mole, 12.01 grams equals 1 mole. I'm getting the masses off the periodic table for each element. And here, 16.00 grams equals 1 mole. Now we can calculate our moles. Okay, let's calculate our moles. 46.67 divided by 14.01. We keep this at 3, so 3.331. This one will keep at 3 digits because the hydrogen only has 3 in its percent. This one is 1.664 and 26.65 for oxygen divided by 16 gives us 
1.666. Now, out of these four moles, which one's the smallest? The carbon one. So we're going to divide everybody by carbon. Okay? out to being one, this one comes out to being one. How is this, does this one come out to be? 6.63 divided by 1.664 gives me approximately 3.98, which ends up being a 4. As we round it up, and 3.331 divided by 1.664, this one gives me like 2.00, so that's approximately 2. So what is my empirical formula here? All right, now, yes, these elements are kind of out of order, just so you know. This, it should go C-H-O-N when you're writing an organic compound. C is the, the beginning parts of the organic compounds. H always follows. And then, sorry, it should be N-O. I'm backwards. N-O usually goes by electronegativities here, okay? So, let's write it out that way. If you write it out the other way, you can just erase it or cross it out and write it with the C first. So we have C, H, H gets a 4, um, N, 2, O. I will try to make sure all the problems have the elements in the order of how they're supposed to be written from now on, okay? And usually they are in the order of how they're supposed to be written in the formula. I do have one more example I would like to show you so you know how to do it. On the second page, oh, I'm sorry, on the back page. It's an easier problem because they already give you the empirical formula. You don't have to do all the percent stuff. Percent to mass, mass to moles, divide by small, multiply to whole. You don't have to do all that stuff because they already give you the empirical formula. Right here, a compound is known to have an empirical formula of CH and a molar mass of 78.11. So it's basically asking you to do the second part of our second example problem here. So we would take our empirical formula and get its mass. So we have 12.01 from the carbon plus 1.01 .01 from the hydrogen, so that gives us 13.02 grams per mole. This is the empirical formula of mass. Now, it tells us the molecular formula of mass is 78.11. So now what do we do? We take our molecular formula of mass, divide it by the empirical formula's mass, and we get our multiplying factor. And what's our multiplying factor here? Anyone? Euler? No? It's supposed to be a joke? Yep. 599, which is approximately 6. It has to be the, the movie. Yes. So our multiplying factor is a 6. So we would take our CH and multiply each by 6. So what do we end up getting? C6H6. Okay, so that was just like the second part of our second example. So you have a couple of the long ones to do that take a little bit longer, and then you have a couple of these shorter ones to finish for homework. But don't forget you have a quiz over molarity solutions, solubility, and dilutions.